Welcome to a TCEA remote learning video. Our topic is Master the Zoom Settings, What Every Presenter Needs to Know, Part 2. Part 2 will cover the individual settings for your Zoom meetings. The facilitators for this video are Peggy and Jennifer. All right, we have now moved over to the Zoom meeting. And we're going to take a look up at the upper right hand corner. And this gives you two types of view for your Zoom meetings. The first one is speaker view. And that means that you can see the big picture of whoever is speaking. <laughs> and then you also have the gallery view. And that's kind of your Brady Bunch grid where you can see everybody at one time. All right, we're going to look at the set the security settings down here in the in the toolbar. You want to click on the word security. These are some security settings that will enable you to change some features on the fly. You probably have already set up some of these features in your master settings, but sometimes you want to change them for individual meetings. And this gives you the ability to do that. You can lock a meeting immediately or you can unlock it. You can enable the waiting room or you can take that um, or you can disable it. Um, down here are three um, settings that you can change for your participants. One of them is to share the screen or you can take that privilege away. Another one is to allow them to chat or again, you can take that away on the fly. And this third one is to rename themselves. And the reason why we recommend you allowing your students to be able to do that is because probably many of them are sharing their device with somebody else. And if they are, then it may come up with their brother's name or their dad's name or their, their sister's name. And this allows them to immediately go in and adjust that. And then the last one is to remove a participant. There might be a time where you just need to remove someone. And so you can quickly do that by coming to this security um, features and click on remove participants. Yes. Peggy is now going to show us the participant pane. Okay. The cool thing about a Zoom meeting is you have three options to communicate back and forth. The first one, like Jennifer said, is bring up your participants pane. This will give you a quick view of who's a host, who's not, and how many participants are in your Zoom room. You also have who's got audio on, who's got their video on or off also. So down below, you have those little icons. So you can answer yes, no, go slower. You've even got some more under more. So you've got um, thumbs up, thumbs down. If you are a participant and not a co-host, or a host, you will have the little raise your hand. And remember about that is only the host can see that, not your participants. I like it too that it all, it has a coffee cup for need a break and away as in the little clock. And then the host can also go and clear all. The next thing that you can do to communicate with your uh, back and forth between your participants is if you go down on the dashboard, you have reactions. You have two options. You have the little clap or you can have the applause or well, vice versa. You have, you've got thumbs up or you've got the applause. And the one thing to remember about this is it will be on there for eight seconds and then it'll disappear. Okay. So now I'm going to show you the chat. So down here on the toolbar, you're going to click on the, the word chat and the chat um, pane will open up. And one of the things that we just recently learned is you can um, pop out that chat feature and then you can move it around. And sometimes that's nice because maybe the teacher is showing something and your chat is in the way and you want to move it around. But if you want it to lock back into its place, you come down to these little dots and you click on merge to meeting window. So now it's part of the, the full meeting window. A couple of things that we want to, to talk about with chat and we've um, one of them is who are you going to allow your students to chat with over here on the three these three dots you have 
some different options. You can allow them to publicly and privately chat with anyone in the meeting. And I wouldn't advise you to do that with students. I would probably um, start off with everyone publicly so that they won't be able to carry on private chats. If you really wanted to lock it down, you could get it to where the students can chat with you. And then if you choose to chat with, um, you know, copy and paste somebody's um, comment into the chat, then you can do that. You can also completely um, lock it down to no one. And, um, oh, the other thing that I wanted to make sure that you know is um, the timing of sharing your links and your um, files. So note down here, you have the ability to share files with your students. And by clicking on that, you can go into your, your computer and you can upload files. You can also put links in, in your, um, the chat, but it's important to know the timing. Only those people who are currently in your meeting will be able to see those links and files. So if a student so if you put those files early in the meeting and then a student enters later, they're not going to see that file and they're not going to see that link. So just note that, that if they if someone comes in late, you're going to have to go back and either send that to them individually or you're going to have to repost it. Another thing to note is that um, Peggy, you can see she's a co-host and she uploaded a file. but. I remember um, if you saw our part one, we told you to make it to where your students could not share files. And the reason why we told you to do that is because that's one way students can misbehave. They can put files in there that maybe have images or something like that that you don't want everyone to see. But there might come a time when you do want a student to share a file. They have something they want to share and you want them to have the ability to do that. Well, you can fix that by going up here into the participant list because I have it open and I can come down, for instance, to Harriet Eagle and I can make her a co-host. And then temporarily, Harriet would be able to share a document. Um, in the, the chat file. And then when she's finished, I can go and I can withdraw that co-host permission. So that gives you some ability to allow your students to be able to just share some things, but then take that um, away. All right, um, but speaking of sharing, let's looking at sharing the screen. The same thing applies here. Who do you want to be able to share and when do you want them to be able to share? So as the presenter or, or as Peggy is the co-presenter, we have the ability to share a couple of things. Now, right now, I don't have any. In fact, I'm going to stop this and I am going to open up a document so that I have more than one thing to share. Now you'll see, I just opened up a, an Excel spreadsheet. So now you can see that I have the ability to share that Excel spreadsheet or my desktop. And if I had a Chrome um, browser open, I would be able to share that. And if I had a Word document open, I would be able to share that. I also have the ability, <clears throat> there's a whiteboard connected to this. I can also share my iPhone or iPhone or iPad via AirPlay or do the same thing through a cable. So those are the different things that I can share. I will tell you one thing that's kind of cool. You have the ability to optimize the screen share for a video clip, also to share the computer sound. So if you're sharing a video, I advise you to do that. And so far I've had pretty good luck with sharing video um, using um, Zoom. It's not choppy at all. But I also want you to see with the carrot, the little um, arrow going up, you can get some advanced sharing options. And this will allow you to um, who can share during your meeting. So do you only want the host to be able to share? Do you want all participants to be able to share the, the screen? And then if you do allow all participants, who can start sharing when someone else is sharing? And then you'd probably want to put only host there. All right, the last thing we want to demo is this little I up here that stands for information. When um, 
you open that, you have easy access to the information about your meeting. But I want you to note that your students have easy access to this as well. So participants can also get to this information, which means they can quickly share this URL. This is the reason why it's probably good to have a waiting room um, or to lock your meeting because a, mischief, a mischievous student could share that with somebody else that could come into your, your classroom and disrupt. So just note that that information is there. I wouldn't necessarily tell your students about it, but they'll figure it out. Okay, Peggy, is there anything else that I need to cover or you need to cover? One more thing, Jennifer, just one more thing, and that's the record. Oh. You do have the ability to record your Zoom meeting. When you press on the little record button, you can either uh, record and save it on the computer or you can save it in the cloud. Our number one recommendation for you is not to allow your students to record the Zoom meeting and probably you don't want to record it either because of FERPA. Yeah, we, we recommend that if you even want to record it, that you check with your district first because rec having a recording means that it could get out and that would be a violation of FERPA is if anyone saw um, a recording of students in a meeting without their parents' permission. Okay, I think that's it, Peggy. Yeah, I think that's it too. That'll, that should get you up and running with your presenter tools in Zoom.